All right, so we're working on a 6x4 diesel gator with a little Yanmar three-cylinder diesel in it. Complain of rough running. So, let's key on. Uh, no glow plug indicator, but it is a little warm, so... So, what can we do? What's going to cause our surging? Well, one, we got our throttle lever here, which uh, I can bring you guys down there. Bear with me. Going down into the Titanic here. This little assembly here, right where my finger's pointing, is the governor assembly. And I don't want to go hopping into that right now. Not in the least. It's all rusted like crazy. Bad spot. Get it all dirty in there. We don't want to do that. And we already confirmed with the throttle here that this isn't really sticking. And generally, if those flywheel or the flyweight stick in the governors, uh, you'll get it right off the bat at idle. Not intermittent. So if we're doing a visual, we can see... We've got fuel here, which we don't like. And we got some fuel over here, which I don't like. And a lot of that comes from these return lines. So these are just little O-rings on the injectors and plastic caps that sit over for your return fuel rail. It's all low pressure. Very common as these get older to leak. Uh, they'll give you a hard starting overnight because it'll allow air into the system and fuel to bleed down. These aren't terrible, but those clamps are a little loose. So that's one factor. Another factor that can cause, we're just disconnecting the fuel shutoff solenoid. That'll come into play in a minute. That's just grease there and oil. Is our fuel quality. Bad fuel quality, dirty, water in it, whatever, will also cause a surging at idle. Fuel quality is good, off-road diesel, not a big problem. And then we have injection overall. So, or air in the system, like I said, from these lines. So, quickest thing, because to do a compression test on these, there's no adapter for these glow plugs. Focus. No adapter for these. You gotta pull an injector. Which means if you're pulling an injector, you're replacing O-rings, uh, crush washer, or crush washer at the bottom. You don't want to do that. So what can we do that's easy? Relative compression, right? So fuel shut off solenoid disconnected. Crank, crank, crank. relatively even peaks if we look closer one two three so and then the yellow here we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute but let's zoom in zoom out a little uh, cursors show so let's just go between our lowest and our highest here <coughs> And our difference is, uh, you know what, let's go even this one to this one. Five amp difference, not super concerned with that at all. So, what's our next step? Relatively, everything is breathing good. So, we can plug this back in, because we're going to be running next. How do we check cylinder contribution? We know air-wise it's good. So, 
we're not going to get any kind of good heat reading off of this manifold. Let me get that out of the way. Off of this manifold because it's a log style. It doesn't have individual runners, which means heat from here radiates this way and that way. Same with this. Same with that. You're not going to get a good per cylinder heat contribution off of that. So that's out. But let's see what kind of pulses we got in our injectors before we go crash cracking lines. So, So, what we got there is pulsations of the fuel line, and these larger amplitude ones focus. So notice we have small, small amplitude, large amplitude, and then, come on, freaking glare. So we got nice even waveform, these are the... Uh, Injectors two and three, injector one, and these are just additional resonations in the fuel rail. This is letting us know each one of these is firing, and they're actually firing pretty good. And if we zoom in a little closer, that to me, from having experimented with this a little bit, tells me that I've got good injection flow through that nozzle. We can see all our little pressure differentials as the tip opens up and then pressure kind of dropping off and this is our actual pumping humps from the injection pump. So, we could do all that. We could go further or we could prove out something for people who don't believe me that you can read injection health just from the nozzle there or the vibrations of the line. Watching, watching it, watching it, watching it, and then we're going to take a 17 millimeter wrench. We're going to crack that line. On. Off. And. We are. I'm going to zoom out on that because we're going to have some where it's building pressure and running and some where it's not. And notice our differentials here. Sorry about the glare. Let's zoom you in a bit. So we've got our... Notice how we have a wonky amplitude there where our, our vibrations are going up and down. And notice how just hashy and noisy and everything else this is compared to how it was before. Now if we go through even further, terrible. And then if we zoom all the way up here, we've got everything nice and nice and clean, level line. Looks pretty. Zoom back out. And then we start to get our surging and we get these little pockets where one, two, three, one, two, three, it's basically no injection occurring at all. So we know that line's good and we can actually, just because this video is long already, let's go back to record here. 